Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We have Dr. Tom O'Brien with us. I'm so excited to be able to tell you. And what we wanna share with you right now is just a little brief introduction about the pre-conference workshop that he will be hosting for us in our new virtual environment. And Dr. O'Brien, we're, again, we're so excited to have you here. And I know your background is in functional medicine and integrative, working with integrative practitioners, including holistic nutritionists. And this pre-conference workshop I know is extremely popular um, going back years with NANP. And it's on um, your pre-certification -certif for gluten-free practitioners. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Well, we're so excited to, um, to present this to everybody and to give them a little bit more background on what this conference is about. And one thing I hope you'll be able to focus on for us is um, what you may be able to contribute to this workshop, since it's not gonna be in person, it will be virtual, and how we can make that impressive and informative for the people that will be participating. So I'll let you take it away and tell yes. us all about it. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, for those who have had a chance to hear my presentations in the past, one of my goals is always to give paradigm shifting information, meaning changing the way we think. And that's what this day will be about. We all think we know about gluten and gluten related problems and just don't eat gluten. I wanna show you three concepts here as a taste of the day. And when this is done in person, the full day, the eight hour day, um, I tell people, please raise your hands any time you have questions. So it's always interactive. So this will be interactive also. You just type in a question and I'll pause wherever I am so that we can make sure that there's uh, a clarity on each of the points of the day. I mean, it's jaw dropping when you see this information. So I I'm going to show you uh, a few slides here and give you those three concepts. So I'm gonna share my screen, and um, I believe my screen is now up. Um, Brooke, can you confirm that my screen is up? I can, yes, it is there. Okay, good. So when you prescribe a gluten-free diet to someone, you increase their risk of early death. What? Yes, watch this. This is the largest study on mortality ever done in celiac disease. And the number of deaths in this study exceeds all of the earlier studies put together. This is in the journal, the American Medical Association. And they looked at, well, I'll get to that. They said, with few exceptions, research shows that if you have positive blood work for sensitivity to wheat, that's the anti glidin antibodies, you increase your risk of death. And I'm going to show you how they came up with that. This is from Sweden, where they have socialized medicine. They have records on everybody. They did 351,000 biopsies on people who were referred to gastroenterologists for some kind of GI complaint. They found 29,000 celiacs in those 350,000 biopsies. And latent celiac disease is when the biopsy was negative, meaning there was no villus atrophy, and I go through all, what all of that is during the full day, but they had positive blood work. That's called latent celiac disease. And they found 3,700 that had positive blood work, but the endoscopy was negative. But then they found the third category was those that had inflammation in their gut. And by inflammation, they're talking about increased intraepithelial lymphocytes. And they found that there were 13,000 with just inflammation, negative biopsy, negative blood work, but inflammation. They then followed these people for 30 years because they've got socialized medicine in Sweden. They could follow everybody. And mortality, increased mortality, was in all three groups. For the celiacs, they had a 39% increased risk of dying early in life from something compared to the other 300,000 that had endoscopies. The people diagnosed with celiac, 39% more likely to die early of heart disease or lung disease or something. On a gluten-free diet, 
35% increased risk of early death if they just had positive blood work, but negative endoscopy. So historically, gastroenterologists would say, if the endoscopy is negative, don't worry about the blood work. It's okay to eat wheat. No, it's not. If your immune system is fighting wheat, you've got a problem here with a 35% increased risk of early death. But the kicker was if they just had inflammation, 72% increased risk of dying early from something. Double if they had total villus atrophy celiac disease. Why? Because nobody checks for inflammation in the gut and nobody treats the inflammation, which means the intestinal permeability continues and people don't have symptoms, but if they still have the permeability and the systemic inflammation that comes from that, wherever their genetic weak link is, that's where they're going to manifest the symptoms. And I go through all of this in the entire day so that it's clearly understood. Cardiovascular disease was the most common cause of death after diagnosis with celiac, followed by malignancies. Now here's the kicker. The highest health risk seen in the first year after biopsy with a risk of early death from malignancy, 3.78, almost fourfold increased death compared to the other 300,000 people that didn't have celiac disease, or 86% increased risk of death in the first year from a cardiovascular incident compared to those that don't have celiac disease. So once they're diagnosed with celiac, there's an 86% increased risk of death in the first year from a cardiovascular incident. These are the people, you put them on a gluten-free diet, they feel better, they lose 10, 15 pounds in the next two months without trying, their thyroid antibodies come down, their myelin antibodies come down, their energy comes up, their brain functions better, but nine months later they die of a heart attack, and you say, oh, that's too bad. Not realizing that putting them on a gluten-free diet was the trigger that likely took them over the edge with an 86% increased risk of death in the first year after diagnosis. This is paradigm shifting. It's like, what? What? And I go through all of the mechanisms of why this happens and how you protect people. So you have to understand the mechanisms of how this occurs in order to really address it successfully. The other point that I wanted to show you here in this two minutes, gluten-free foods are not safe. The American Journal of Gastroenterology, just last March, they published this paper where Peter Green at Columbia, world famous gastroenterologist in the world of celiac disease, had 804 people go into gluten-free restaurants around the country with testing equipment. And they ordered off the gluten-free menu. They looked at 5,624 different foods on the gluten-free menu. The waiter comes to the table, you place your order. When the waiter or waitress walks away, you open up your briefcase, put the testing equipment on the table. When the food comes, you immediately test the food. What did they find? 32% of everything in a gluten-free restaurant is not gluten-free. 32%. Breakfast, 27%. Dinners, 34%. Gluten-free pizza, 53% of the time. It's not gluten-free. Gluten-free pasta, 51% of the time. It's it's not gluten-free. It's like, what? What? When you think you're safe and you're not safe. And I go through this in great detail. There are many studies on this type of contamination issue that's out there. But what do you do about it? That's what's important here is how do you guide your patients and clients in being safe on a gluten-free diet and reducing the risk of early death? Here's what you have to do. You have to give them an enzyme, a digestive enzyme that's going to work. And all of these gluten-free enzymes that are out there, they take three hours, four hours to work. They don't work in an acidic environment of stomach. Uh, pepsin inactivates those enzymes. And so it takes three, four hours for them to work. The problem is the sentries standing guard protecting you from anything that might come out of the stomach that acid didn't kill, any bacteria, are right inside the first part of the small intestine. 
They're called dendritic cells, and they activate toll-like receptor 4. Every time you eat wheat, you activate toll-like receptor 4. I'll show you all the studies on this. Toll-like receptor 4 is the mechanism by which our ancestors were protected from bugs and bacteria. If acid didn't kill the food that they found when picking up food and eating it, acid didn't kill it, it activated toll-like receptor 4 and the innate inflammatory cascade in the proximal part of the small intestine. You'll understand all of these, this anatomy and how all this works, so you really dial this down. But the enzymes, the enzymes have to work in the stomach to protect your clients and your patients because you don't want to turn on toll-like receptor 4. So there are some enzymes, studies have shown there are some enzymes that can do this. And we're going to talk all about those enzymes and how they can actually break down any inadvertent exposures to wheat within 60 minutes. Now, realistically, one capsule will digest an entire slice of whole wheat bread, but you never tell your patients that, right? Because th they need to understand they don't tempt fate, but they work within 60 minutes. And we're going to talk about how do you do that? How do you how do you protect your patients once you've educated them on this? So this whole world of gluten sensitivity is one that we think put them on a gluten-free diet and they get better, but you increase their risk of early mortality within a year. And that's what I want to make sure everyone understands. Well, and I appreciate what to do to protect yourself and your patients. Well, we're having a little bit of a connection problem, but I think we, we got all of that. And I'll tell you, it's absolutely fascinating the amount of scientific uh, research that you're going through and um, just the interaction that I know you're gonna have with the practitioners um, is gonna be extremely informative yet again. And I just can't thank you enough for taking the time today to go through all of this for us and for the people that I think are considering already signed up for the workshop. Um, well, thank you, Barbara. You, uh, yes. Uh, um, we will do a lot of Q and A's uh, because this needs to be interactive because this is paradigm shifting. When right. you hear this kind of information, it's paradigm shifting. And, and you, you don't change your paradigm by reading a research paper. You read a paper, and then you start asking questions, you know, inside. You say, wait a minute, what does that mean? Exactly. Right? So there has to be that interaction back and forth throughout the day. And we'll do that. We'll have lots of time for Q&As so I can make sure everyone understands this basic principle. Excellent. Well, I know everyone's going to be really looking forward to meeting you, Dr. O'Brien. Uh, I am Barbara Rogers. I'm the president-elect of NANP for 2020, and I look forward also to meeting everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Barbara.